Good morning and happy Canada Day, July 1st. I am standing in this beautiful cathedral, All Saints Cathedral Church in Halifax. My name's Heather and I'm a deacon here. Just a little bit about those of you who may not be from these parts. Canada, is a Canada Day is a national holiday, not a feast of the church, and yet it is right that we Christians offer prayer and thanksgiving today because all the good things which we enjoy as Canadians have their origins as gifts of God. The resources of our land and the oceans which border it, our diversity as Canadian people, the heritage of confederation, and our nation's continuing efforts to ensure peace and justice for all its citizens, all these things call the church to remember and celebrate the God who gave them. At the same time, we as the people of the church must accept an immense responsibility as citizens of Canada. We believe that divine grace seeks to fulfill what divine power has created. We are the servants of this saving purpose of God. We do not leave the concerns of Canadian society behind behind us when we enter our churches. We enter our churches in order to gain fresh strength from the work of making God's justice, compassion, and wisdom ever more present in the life of our nation. On Canada Day, our task is to dedicate ourselves to the mission of bringing all our country's resources, natural and human, within the circle of God's redemptive love in Jesus Christ. If any serve me, the Father will honor them. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens, until you show us your mercy. God has called us together for this time of worship. God is listening to our thoughts and to our speaking. God inclines an ear to us and hears us. God knows us better than we know ourselves. Let us open our hearts to the one who gives us life. Let us set our faith and hope in God. God's promises to us are ancient and ever new. God is with us here and on all roads we travel. We recognize we are precious in God's sight. Wondrous God, present us with us when we do not know it, valuing us when we do not care for ourselves, planting in us the seed of your word, even when the soil of our hearts is hard and unyielding. Open our eyes to recognize you here. May we sense your presence next to us. May we hear your voice. May we know your touch. May we see you in one another and in the beauty all around us. May your reality emerge deep inside each life, transforming our thoughts and deeds and our relationships with one another. Amen. I read him from the book of Isaiah. See, a king will reign in righteousness, and princes will rule with justice. Each will be like a hiding place from the wind, a covert from the tempest, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land. Then the eyes of those who have sight will not be closed, and the ears of those who have hearing will listen. The minds of the rash will have good judgment, and the tongues of staminers will speak readily and distinctly. A fool will no longer be called noble, nor a villain will be said to be honorable. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness will abide in the fruitful field. The effect of righteousness 
will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. The word of the Lord. Psalm number 85, verses 1 to 6. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what the God, the Lord, will speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has given you. So you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and demolish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your heart, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Peter preached. Save yourselves from the crooked generation. Repent, so your sins may be forgiven. We participate in our society's alienation from God. We have joined the me generation in putting our own interests before all else. We have much to confess before we can claim the wholeness God offers. O oh God, we confess that we rush through the days without recognizing your presence with us. We follow our busy diversions without reference to your will for us. We strive for financial success and personal recognition while you call for obedience to truth and genuine mutual love. Purify our souls. We pray and redirect our priorities. May we be born anew through your loving and enduring word. Amen. The promise of forgiveness is for us and for our children, 
for everyone whom God calls. The gift of the Holy Spirit is ours to receive. Lift up the cup of salvation every day and call on God's name. Give thanks for the words and deeds of Jesus who reveal God's love for us and enlists us as disciples and apostles. Everlasting God, you kindled such holy love in the heart of your servant and all of your servants, Jesus, that he devoted his life to the poor, the sick, and the peace and unity of your church. Grant us strength to meditate upon the passion of your son, that we may work in the image of his compassion until we rejoice in the revelation of his glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. God of love and judgment, who made Jesus both sovereign and Messiah, and who welcomed us into your family through the waters of baptism, we seek once again to know the risen Christ in our midst, and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we might be obedient in your truth and genuine in our love for one another. May the new birth provided by your living, enduring word send us forth this morning as deeply committed messengers of good news. Amen. Almighty God, whose wisdom and whose love are over all, Accept our prayers we offer for our nation. Give integrity to our citizens and wisdom to those in authority that harmony and justice may be secured in obedience to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have been called away from our wicked ways. We have been ransomed for our fertile ways. Life's meaning is not to be found in silver or gold. We have found new life in trusting God. We have been born anew through God's enduring word. We embrace a living faith and hope. We purify our souls through obedience to truth. We love one another deeply from the heart. Christ is alive in our midst. Christ goes with us along life's roads. We go out to serve in Christ's name. May the love of Christ find expression in us. Amen.